All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for watching us on YouTube, putting us in your ears wherever you're listening to this podcast. I know I say it every week, but we greatly appreciate y'all just trusting us with your health and fitness and coming to us for advice. Mm -hmm. We know there's a bazillion ways to get information out there, some of them less um, scrupulous than others, which we're kind of gonna we're gonna kind of get into that with some of these questions that we have in this Q and A. Some less fun than others. But I feel like this one's fun. This one's fun. Uh, <laughs> that's what we're here for. We're here I for the fun. the fun. Um, we do have a sponsor today, but oh, before no. we get to the sponsor, why don't we? Well, we, this is a Q and A episode. Let me just. Okay. I, we always get like ten minutes into this, and we're, we're yeah. like, "What are we doing today?" <laughs> uh, we've got some. We're talking about perimenopause. We're talking about growing your glutes. We're talking about LMNT, the supplement, and some other stuff too. Yeah. But let's give a quick um, update on how the eclipse went oh, down. Oh yes. We the survived. Eclipse. Uh, we're actually working on a YouTube video. We took a lot of footage over the weekend and we're putting together a vlog style uh, video for our YouTube channel. Should have that out within the next few days, but yeah. how did it go? The eclipse itself was awesome. It was cloudy that day, but it didn't really matter because you got to see pieces of it. But then we got, we got to experience the like darkness, the totality and like actually on our YouTube channel, Jonathan took a time lapse. Um, and it's really cool to see like how the sky changed. And if you're watch, if you do go and watch the time lapse, it's only like 30 seconds mm -hmm. or something or a minute, but like watch, it's like pointing at a flag and mm -hmm. you see like during like the two minutes of totality, the flag completely stopped moving. It was just like, everything went still. And then it started ramping up again. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. We got to go up on, um, our landlords invited us over and we had lunch and then we all went up on this hill at the very top of the property and set out some chairs and just sat out there for like two hours talking and wait, you know, kind of like just experiencing like the changes. Yeah, watching it it get, was cool. Watching it get dim and it throwing really our glasses cool. on anytime the clouds yeah, would break. I enjoyed it. The, but as far as like, you know, it was, pandemonium. it was unfortunate because I think like, you know, I, we talked a lot about how the city really like kind of scare I feel like scared everybody into staying home or not even maybe not coming. And they were like by mid weekend, they were begging people to come into town because it was like less busy than a regular weekend mm -hmm. because they had basically scared all the residents. I mean, everybody that we talked to was like, yeah, I'm stocked up on groceries. I'm not going to town. Don't want to cause trouble for them. They've told us a hundred times don't go into town. And then they had, they had, you know, visitors, but none of the residents and none of the friends and everybody else, no one was downtown doing all the things. They had concerts and food trucks and all this stuff planned. They had the roads closed. They had to reopen the roads because there was no reason to close. <laughs> anyway, well, it was it was a big, I feel like this is going to be the talk of the town for like the next year because it was such a big deal that like, no, I mean, the grocery stores were empty because they had told us all to, you know, don't go to the, don't go to town after like Tuesday. Yeah. And we all did that. Like we learned a big lesson personally though, because we did stock up at the grocery store knowing yeah. that we weren't going to go through the weekend and stuff. And usually we go at least twice mm -hmm. a week to the grocery store. We're like, all right, let's like think ahead, buy enough stuff to where we don't have to do that. We're recording this on Wednesday. We haven't been to the grocery store since last Tuesday. We went last Tuesday and we're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to last for a week without a grocery <laughs> store? And we, you know, it's Wednesday and we still like, we need some bananas, but yeah, we're, we're still doing, doing pretty, pretty good. good. We're learning that we're going to see like if mm -hmm. we spend less money on groceries this month overall because of that change. Oh, let me tell what we did get to do though. We, we did sneak out and uh, we went to a neighboring town that was like, Oh, everybody in town come out and enjoy. So we went over there <laughs> called Buda and they had a free concert and like they had, it was their, their birth, the, the city's birthday party or whatever, but I'm a really big shaky graves fan and I've been to many of his shows paid, but anyway, I don't know if I should say this on the podcast. Not that many people like stalking, but he now lives in Buda. He used to live in Austin and it was hilarious. He was like, I got to get out of Austin, move to Buda. But, um, <laughs> He did a free hour and a half full concert show for the Buddha's birthday. Yeah. He was like the headliner. We went and my mind was blown. It was just like a park. It's a park set up for this kind of stuff. It had mm -hmm. like a big amphitheater stage and all this stuff. There was no, they didn't even have a security guard checking people. You just walked in, walked up to the park. We stood up on in the pit front row yep. or like right behind people, second row. 
and watched his show. It was amazing. Yeah, we haven't been in the pit for a concert <laughs> since like our old Dave Matthews band days. Anyway, it was super fun. And yeah, that was it. Was really it was really cool because I think because it, it was a free show and it was from you know he's from that town and so he's just like it was super relaxed yeah. and he was hilarious. And it was good. Took a lot of shots with my iPhone. I'm gonna throw some of those into the uh, yeah. video of the weekend. Anyway. Okay, that's the update on the <laughs> clips. We'll see you guys for the next the one that comes around whenever that is. Um, podcast sponsor of the week uh, is the Pond Sliding Turtle. Did I say that right? I think it's a pond slider. Pond slider pond turtle. turtle. <laughs> oh gosh. This is not the first time that a turtle has wandered its way up into our yard. Uh, but and disrupted our uh, workflow, basically. Yeah, because we have a creek in our backyard, and I guess um, he just got bored. Even when we done lived in Houston, creek. I remember after some That's hurricanes true, yeah. and some floods, we find turtles quite often, and I just get like. I get fascinated by them and I'm like, now where did he go? Like I was trying to like, you know, stay in the office and work. And then I'd be like, well, now I gotta go check where he went. Now, where did he go? I was like, I'm getting nothing done checking on this turtle. So what'd you do? Well, I kept checking on the turtle. So the turtle like came up here and he was like walking up in our, like the, the water's way down there. He kept walking in the driveway, walking. I'm like, dude, you're lost. And then finally he wandered into like some really spiky plants. Yeah. So I was like, and he was like up against a wall and I was just like, okay, I was trying to be nice and help this turtle. And he was quite big. And I put on, Jonathan's like, go get some gardening gloves. And I put on some gloves and I tried to pick up the turtle and I found out that turtle's growl. <laughs> so it, it actually like, I, I approached him closely and I heard a growl, which, but then I like, when Jonathan walked up to me, I was like, I was like scraping my shoe. I was like, I think my shoe made a weird noise yeah. because turtles don't growl. <laughs> So I just, I just kind of wrote it off as like my turt, my, my Maybe shoe my like stomach. made this like weird noise on against these rocks. I'm just going to proceed. Mm -hmm. And then I went to pick him up and he like growled. Uh huh. It was, you could hear it from like oh, six, yeah. 10 feet away. And she screamed. I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just kind of funny because the day before when we were with our landlords, they have a big giant, like several hundred acre ranch. And they were talking about needing a, like another ranch hand. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to do it. Like, it's like, I mean, like that would be my dream is just like work on a ranch out in the sun all day. And I was like, except I don't want to kill anything. I don't want to handle like when mice are in, you know, people's yeah. houses or anything like dirty. I mean, I don't mind being dirty, but I don't want to, you know, gross animal stuff, Yeah, or, but yeah. I want to do other stuff. You want to go like catch snakes. <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, I can't even pick up a turtle. I can't work on a ranch. What am I thinking? <laughs> but we were able to, uh, she also fed the turtle some lettuce yeah. she, out of our, her new garden that she's we, trying to We go to, to this like feed store all the time and they're all, this, this giant tortoise, those are like, I feel like called tortoises. He's always eating lettuce mm -hmm. and he's always eating like a big head of iceberg lettuce so i'm actually growing some swiss chard and so i took a, i picked up a leaf and i gave it to him and he ate a big he chunk munched, of he it. it and um i actually looked up and after that i was like is it okay to feed turtles lettuce and it said like don't give them this it said this on the internet don't give them iceberg give them something hearty like swiss chard and i was like son of a gun i mean we do offer nutrition coaching services <laughs> maybe we could diversify out to the veterinary side of things and there, we have donkeys and sheep down the road let's figure out what they eat too and just take this full circle yeah all right well he's we returned him to the water we pointed him pointed in the, him right, in the direction. right direction <laughs> and then he kept rerouting but then finally after, oh, after a few helpings of lettuce, he was done and ready to go. My swim. nose is running from laughing so much. <laughs> All right, you ready to get into some of these Q and A's? We're going to try to keep this kind of brief today. All right. All right. First one. Any help with the effects of perimenopause plus weight gain? I'm guessing and not being discouraged about it. Why don't you take this one? All right. I'm the <laughs> expert on perimenopause. <laughs> All right. I really like how they how they said and not being discouraged about it. So let's kind of focus on that and talk about like some ways that we can, we can not be discouraged yeah. about this. So the first thing that came to my mind was like, we've, if we're, if we're approaching this age, we've been through changes before, yeah. both like hormonally and lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, like think about when you transition from like being a, a teenager to like a young adult, adult, there's all the hormones that are going on. <laughs> um, think about like, maybe you were, you know, an active, like person in high school, maybe college, and then you got married mm -hmm. and you transitioned to like 
a more sedentary lifestyle. So that's like a lifestyle change. Or you were newlyweds and then had kids and like everything changed yeah. without your activity and your daily routine. Like, yes. So I think like going in and approaching this as another one of those things where like, okay, you know, you transition from like, I was super athletic and active in like college and stuff. And then like, I got a desk job and I gained weight and I was sedentary and I had to think about like, okay, oh, shoot. <laughs> I have to get an exercise routine. I have to like dial in my eating habits a little bit closer because I can't be so, you know, like Flexible. eating anything I want, like I could when I was a teenager. So it's, it's, I think thinking about it like that and knowing you've done this before is a way to not be discouraged and also like help combat this is mm -hmm. you know, just like, we have to be a little bit more diligent with what we're doing, with what we're eating, with the way that we're training. And we're going to get to that in a, yeah. in a minute. And, um, and a lot of this, the, like this, the fear around this comes from like these giant changes yeah. that are happening in our metabolism at the time. But mm -hmm. we have to keep sight of the fact that the age that this is happening at <clears throat> in women, men are going through the same thing just with a different hormonal, yeah, that's you know, true. women are losing their estrogen and men are having a decline in testosterone. Mm -hmm. And both of those things can contribute to a change in metabolism. Yeah. And that's what we got to focus on and try to combat against as much as possible. Yeah. And I think another way, what I was just alluding to is just like ways to combat this yes. with like, you know, if you're, if you're younger and you're listening and you're listening to this is like, get on a routine now of like your strength training, mm -hmm. um, get on a routine now of like your healthy eating habits. And if you're in this age and you're listening to this, start a routine of strength training yeah. now, that's the thing that we need to be doing. Start a routine of like, we have to, you know, maybe we were like, flexible at like 75 to 80% eating good. And then the rest was like, whatever, we might have to skew that more toward like 90% of the time. Yeah. You know, I know, I, you know, you hate to hear this, but it's true. Like right. more like 90% of the time we need to be eating a healthy balanced diet, you know, and then letting loose for the other 10. And then, like I said, it's similar to like when we, you know, got married or started college and we were like, Oh, I, I need to like dial this back in because I've let the reins off. Yeah. Some other good news is though, like, it, you know, it, so many people demonize like, Oh, like the metabolism just tanks like this mm -hmm. age range or because of menopause or whatever, but any change in metabolism is a gradual process. So, you know, let's say just throw out some numbers. Like let's say you're a female who's been used to eating, whether you're tracking or not, you've been used to eating about 2000 calories per day, you know, a natural decline in metabolism might only mean that you're losing about a hundred calories per day over the course of a year in your total daily energy mm -hmm. expenditure. So what we have to think about is like, if we just keep eating the same amount of food that we've been eating based on our habits up until this point, and we do have that natural decline, that slow natural decline in metabolism, we will start to gain weight because we keep at our base level mm -hmm. of eating as our metabolism goes down. But because it happens gradually, it's not this overnight thing yeah. where you just start gaining weight and you do have ways to, uh, you know, account for it other than just eating less. So let's talk about what we're going to do to ramp our metabolism up. Should we do more cardio? Should we do more hit? Should we do more running? No, those are all catabolic activities that just burn calories while we're do them, doing them. We need to build up a reserve of muscle so that we keep our total daily energy expenditure up as high as we can through the thing that burns the most calories overall, which is our basal metabolic rate. That big chunk of calories that gets burned just moving our body around, having all this muscle mass on our body, which is way more metabolically active than fat. And the only way to do that is by lifting weights. Why are I was you laughing? Like, get to, I was like, tell them what it is. We got to lift weights. We got to get stronger, like resist the urge to just go for that temporary calorie burn by, you know, doing some quote calorie burning exercises mm -hmm. and put the money in your savings account of the muscle mass that needs to be built. We're talking about regular old barbell, dumbbell mm -hmm. strength training, get stronger so that you have that reserve to fight against the natural decline. This goes for men too, because yeah. your, your basal metabolic rate is going down too, as you lose muscle mass past your thirties in your forties, in your fifties. I think about our old clients and like how much they're fighting against this Older. right now. What'd I say? Old. <laughs> so yeah, it's about, uh, it's about building up that reserve. And then just acknowledging the fact that during this time, like women, you are going to have symptoms that are going to be super annoying and they're going to make doing those things that we just talked about mm -hmm. being more specific with your diet, staying on track more often, getting your training in, it's going to make all those things harder. Hot flashes are going to make you wake up 
in the middle of the night. All the changes in your mood are going to make you less motivated to train. You might feel depressed and like you're on this like never ending cycle of not being able to do anything right. And all those things are feeding into the thing that makes it harder to stay consistent with the things that are fighting against that natural decline in yeah. metabolism. And so I think it's, just like everything, we have to like find a way to get the things that we need to get done versus like put a, like be like, put a block up like, Oh, that I can't do that right. anymore. You know, find a way to, to, to do it. One thing that happened yeah. to me personally was like, as I mean, hormone changes are no joke. And <laughs> like a year ago, it made me have like heart palpitations and it was terrifying. <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with me? And I went to a doctor and they made me wear a heart monitor for like, two weeks. And every time my heart, I felt something, I had to press it. And like, they did this recording. And I mean, in like, when I went into the heart doctor, she was like, why are you here? You look very healthy. Like you don't mm -hmm. look like the people that should be here. And I told her what was going on. And, you know, and I was like, I think it might be my hormones or something maybe. And she's like, there's no way, like you don't, you're not, you're, you wouldn't be doing that. Like, oh, she just didn't think like at my age, like that would be experiencing that or whatever. But anyway, she was just like, and it turns out it was my hormones and it was like, you know, the heart palpitations weren't even enough to barely register, but like I could feel them in it. It made me afraid of training. It made me mm -hmm. afraid of like, until I knew what was going on, it made me afraid to like push myself. Like I would be like, I'm just going to walk on the treadmill, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm going to lift some weights, but I'm not going to use any intensity. Yeah. And it like made me afraid until I knew what was going on. And then I had to find a way to like get through the fear and then like push myself yeah. past that. And, you know, and like, you could see how this could play out in, yeah. in somebody where like they're, they're fearful. They don't like the way that they're feeling that makes them less motivated to train. Mm -hmm. They start to feel more lethargic because they're not training. Their nutritional habits start to slip at yeah. the same time that their metabolism is potentially going yeah. in the wrong direction is the perfect storm for weight gain. So that's but why it's so important it's to like, but fix let, the stuff up here in the mind. First. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. Like find a way makes you feel so much better in the end than letting, than giving in to that, whatever's going on, yeah. whatever symptoms might be going on. If you just give into it and it like, it lets it, it, it will defeat you, yeah. you know? And so don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> don't be in that place. All right. And this is a perfect segue. Look, can I say one more the, thing? Into the question two. No, oh, you're well, done. Well, one more thing. <laughs> I just want to reemphasize, cause this is like a theme throughout everything that we talk about in these podcasts is if you can control your sleep as much as possible mm -hmm. during this time, it's going to have a trickle down effect on all the things that are going to affect how positive you stay and if you gain weight or not. So, so, you know, besides like you, you can't maybe affect the hot flashes and stuff like that, that's disrupting your sleep, but w cut out caffeine in the afternoon as much as possible, cut out alcohol as, at night as much as possible. So you give yourself the chance to maximize your sleep as much as you can so that you do get the added like trickle down benefits mm -hmm. of being able to make better decisions and be able to do your training and fight against this. As Another much tip as on sleep, I feel like is just like, if, if you are woken up, don't put a screen in front of oh, your Lord, eyes. No. Like that's the worst thing you can do to not let yourself get back yeah, to sleep. That's terrible. <laughs> okay. Don't do it. People. We were talking about weight training. So question two All says right. what to do. What do you do when you start to get sick of lifting? especially squats. Bum, bum, bum. I, I like, this is, I could have written this question. Like <laughs> I feel the same way. Um, and it, it's funny because we're actually like just started a new cycle with our clients and we're doing this very thing. We have been in a cycle where we've been hammering down the like squats, the deadlift, the bench presses, the presses, you know, all the way to where we got maxes the other week. And and they've been doing it for a long time and I don't want them to get sick of it and come to us and be like, I don't want to do this training anymore. Yeah. So I change the method that we're using. The template. The template. So right, like, for example, right now we're doing heel elevated squats of some sort. Like mm -hmm. it can be a goblet. It can be a two dumbbells. It can be a, a barbell front rack, you know, um, things like that. You can do lunges. There's so many different like things that you can do to like maintain your leg strength and even grow your leg strength in different ways mm -hmm. temporarily for a season. So if you don't love squatting, don't squat every day every week for three, for 52 weeks out of the year, right? Do it in cycles, do like a 12 week cycle where you're doing a linear progression and then take some time off of that and do lunges, do mm -hmm. other things to like grow your leg strength. Think about the things that are, that squats are doing for you and yeah. do other exercises that will do that same thing. Or if it's deadlifts or if it's presses or whatever the lift is that you 
are trying, you know, like whenever that day comes up, you're like, I'm going to miss the gym today because I hate this. Lift. <laughs> if you feel yeah. that way, when's then chest that, day again, <laughs> then that's an indication that like, you know, and I, you know, I say this with a greatest of for like, if, if you just don't like doing burpees and the burpees are there, that's always my example, mm-hmm. but you know, it's something that you need to do. Don't be like, I'm not going to, what else can I do besides burpees? Yeah. I would just like, <laughs> I would also just say, kind of look at the overall picture here too. Like, are you just less motivated to train in general because of some kind of life stress that's going on? Yeah. And you're like, your Shaking desire to not squat. do squats is just a symptom of like, you know, the no. fact that you hate your job or whatever. Like, you know, if it is, then like, be honest about that, get to the root of the issue. Mm-hmm. And maybe the fire for training comes back and some of that motivation comes back and you're like, I love squats. Well, change like, but also, you know, like even not even just like not changing your rep scheme helps a ton too. The loading, the rep scheme. Yeah. Like if you, if you've been doing a linear progression, you do have been doing three by five for, you feel like forever. And you're just like, I can't bear to go into the gym when it's my squat day, (laughs) then like change up the rep scheme, you know, you know, do higher volume, lower weight squats for a time. Right. Just, you know, if you've been doing a leg press machine, if you have one at your gym, just do something else, but still go in there, you know, and, for a, for a temporary time. Like, if, I feel like I'm like rambling on this one. No, I mean, let's just throw some, I, I made a list of like potential other exercises that mimic the squat that maybe you haven't thought of. Lunges, Cossack squats, step ups, the leg press machine, hack squats, single leg work, learn to do some yeah. pistols, leg extensions, hamstring curls, all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. there's some ideas on that. Like we said before, change the load, change the rep scheme, add tempo. And then one thing I like to do, especially when the weight is getting really, really heavy and you start dreading, you know, your workouts is to switch to like a heavy, light, medium template where yeah. you're not lifting, you know, you're not doing the same rep scheme and the same ascending weight every week. One week's heavy, one week's lighter, mm-hmm. one week's medium, and you rotate through that cycle trying to add weight over the course of that cycle. Another rep scheme we just finished with our clients that everybody really did seem to love. We had been in a linear progression for quite a, quite some time. And then I moved everybody to a nine, seven, five, three for like a 12 week cycle. And it's, so it's super fun because you're not always doing the same weight for 15 reps. You're doing nine at a, a lighter weight, seven, a little bit heavier, mm-hmm. five then three. And you're looking to like, you have the flexibility to increase anywhere in that range. Like okay, I think I can add some weight to those fives and threes, but those nines and sevens were like really tough and like, those are getting easier now. So I'm going to add weight on that side, that three rep, I barely got it up. So I'm staying there, (laughs) you know, and you just have, you have all this flexibility and it doesn't feel as intimidating when you walk into the gym and load up that barbell for that type of rep scheme. So tons of ideas to do there. All right. Number three, a lot of people I follow promote LMNT. Same with us, I feel like. Is it worth it? <laughs> I see. I hear some people pronounce it element. Some people pronounce it element. Yeah. I don't really know what the I right answer is. I feel like it's element, but element. Um, um, I mean, I think you're right. I even saw it actually at the most, like when we were in um, Port Aransas at that RV park. I was That's like, right. I was like, they're selling element here. That's interesting. Anytime, like, I think it's right for your spidey senses to kind of go off when you st- start seeing like a lot of people promote something the way that athletic greens was all mm, over the place for a greens, while yeah. there and collagen protein and all that kind of stuff. Barbell. <laughs> well, we don't have a supplement line that's grossly overpriced. But <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, it. is it worth it? So I, I did some research um, on what the thing costs in the first place. It's about 75 cents per serving. And they recommend Let's talk about what it is. I think we'll, we'll get there. Okay. We'll okay. get there. But, and they recommend you take one to two servings per day. So as far as the cost, we're looking at potentially about 45 bucks a month in LMNT, which is a mixture of sodium, potassium flavors, sweetener, and a couple other things mixed in there for good luck. <laughs> it's basically a salt additive, an electrolyte, like Gatorade, which you just add into your water. Mm-hmm which turns it into a salt water. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, it's, it's like what you would use when you would use like something like a no, Gatorade. Gatorade has calories, like, you know, has carbohydrates in oh, it too. Okay, okay. This is, this is this just is like just a, an extra electrolyte supplement. Okay. Um, and like, I'm not against electrolyte supplements, mm-hmm. especially if it makes you drink more water. Right. That's the main benefit for most people. It's just having something other than plain water to drink that makes you more excited to pick the thing up and stay hydrated because the main benefit of all these things that you can add to water is mm-hmm. they make you drink more water. <laughs> now, if you want to add 75 cents into the bottle and it's making you drink more water and you can afford it, 
then go for it. Yeah. But just adding more salt into your diet isn't going to supercharge your performance, increase your recovery, anything like that. Unless you're like routinely getting muscle cramps, like constantly you're waking up yeah. with Charlie horses or, you know, you reach back to get something out of the car and your lat cramps. Number one, your training program needs some attention, but Number two, you just need to drink some more water. And if that's not working, then we can talk about supplementing with an electrolyte powder. If you train on the surface of the sun and you're sweating like five gallon or Houston, Texas, and you're sweating like a gallon, you know, you're like just wiping yourself yeah. down between every set. You really are losing enough salt through your sweat that you might need to supplement it. But that, like 99% of the people listening to this podcast are not that person. And you don't just have to add more salt to your diet just for the sake of adding salt. You know, the RDA for salt is like between two and actually, yeah, the salt, the RDA is between two and three grams of salt per day. And I just told you that one of these packs has a gram mm. in it. And if you take two per day, you're already at the bottom range of the RDA of sodium. And that's not counting that's any of the sodium yeah. <laughs> in your food. And you'd be surprised how many foods just have sodium in it. I mean, mm. even yogurt has sodium in it. So, you know, your body can tolerate having more than the RDA amount of sodium in it. Like your body has ways to accommodate for extra salt influx into it without becoming like a toxic situation, yeah. but you're not supercharging your performance just by eating more salt. If you're drinking enough water, you're getting the benefit of being hydrated. How do you know when that's happening? When your pee is like a pale yellow color, that's as complicated mm -hmm. as we need to make it. And for most people, just drinking to thirst, having water around in mm -hmm. your environment that makes you like, oh, I should drink some water. There it is. I am a little bit thirsty. That's usually enough for most people. I would rather see you take that $45 a month and invest in creatine yeah. and high quality protein powder. At least the protein powder is food that's filling, has calories in it and adds to your daily protein intake. I would hate to see somebody spend $45 a month on a salt supplement and they're under eating protein. That is truly the definition of missing the forest for the trees. So <laughs> I hope I was not unclear about my opinion on that. <laughs> is it this? Is it similar to the thing I use, Ultima? Yeah. Okay. I, but I'm yours just, has way less salt than this does. Yeah, I use a thing called Ultima, um, the one that comes in like the little jar and with the scooper. And right. I literally just use it for like I. It's just like you get in these patterns of stuff. Like I have coffee in the morning, and then I drink a like a bottle like the size or the whatever of water with that mm -hmm. purple purple powder in it and you, you know, i drink. like the i like that it comes in like the big jug and you can use as much as you want based on the size of your cup or just for flavor right. like you don't have to use a full serving every time and it's you know yeah that'll be hard to do with the element packs cause yeah because it's, like it's like a pour a pour in thing but you know this is like you can just sprinkle a little bit and i do think it is just like a thing i've gotten into for a habit it helps me drink that you know, a cup of water a day. I only use one serving a day because it's, you know, you don't want to overdo the, yeah. I think this one has like magnesium and other it has things vitamin in it. C and magnesium. Yeah. Well, yeah I mean, <clears throat> but but, anyway. and I think it's closer to like 300 or 500 milligrams of sodium, yeah. not one gram. I, but I, I, you know, I, I think I got it solely for just like having my, making myself drink more water. If I have this like flavor in it, Yeah. that's my first cup. And then, you know, move on to other, and other things. <laughs> just a little peek behind the curtain of why, you, why all these influencers are selling this is because they tell you like use element, like use a discount code, like yeah. hot sweaty dude and save 20% at, at checkout. Okay. Well, when you use hot sweaty dude as the coupon code element knows that they you came to them through the influencer that they gave the code to. And that influencer gets a kickback in dollars. And that's the reason that they're promoting it. It doesn't mm -hmm. cost the influencer anything to have this discount code out yeah. there, which is why so many influencers are always promoting all these different discount they codes for supplements. It, they don't have to use they, it. They, they just could. get a, they yeah. just get a paycheck when you use it. I think that is what gets confusing is if you do watch somebody or follow somebody that you feel like you like know and trust, I'm not saying everybody does this at all, but like if you do feel, follow somebody, you know, and trust, and then you're like, oh, they're using that. I feel like, like that must be good, you yeah. know, or they're wearing that. That must be mm -hmm. good. They have those shoes. That must be good. And it, yeah. and it could be simply because have you ever see us wearing anything and drinking anything, <laughs> we're not sponsored by nobody. So it's all the stuff we purchase so you can trust it. <laughs> and even but, when we have the, the 20% off through athletic oh, brewing, yeah. when somebody uses that code and saves money on athletic brewing, we don't get paid no, no. off that. We get points towards like using to buy like beer in their or, store yeah. or a shirt or whatever. Uh, plus that's like telling you there's a healthier alternative than drinking 
regular alcohol in certain occasions is not the same as saying you need to pour this salt into your water. We're not doing a good job if you want to get a good pump. Shorter. <laughs> no, we're not. We're doing the opposite right now. All right. Number four, this question did not come in from Haley, but we got this idea. Yeah. She said, this is like the thing that she, that people are talking, people are talking about this on the streets right now. On the ground. On the main streets. What's the deal with go ahead and, colostrum, colostrum supplements? supplements? And I have no idea what the deal is, so I don't even, I had I don't just, even know what they are. I had to look it up, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I, I'd seen it in my Instagram feed. I try to spend less time consuming Instagram, but you just can't help you know, yeah. see trends of things. And like, and I, I genuinely try to ignore almost everything that has to do with <laughs> supplements since you don't really need any supplements, but this thing does not seem to be going away. So I had to look it up okay. and see what the deal is. I'm going to read to you this thing. I pasted off the internet because it's just too hard to believe. Anyway, colostrum is made from the milky fluid a cow secretes after giving birth before they start producing breast milk. So mad scientists are out there. It seems kind of like um, mean to sneak up on these cows and steal their <laughs> colostrum right after they've had a baby to make a supplement out of. So they extract this milky, this they extract this milky fluid, then they hydrolyze it into a powder. And then they sell it to you in a little jar this size for a hundred dollars. You put a scoop in your, um, in your shake and you get the colostrum in your body from these cows. They say it improves immunity, gut health, and helps fight infection. Unfortunately, this feels like the Maury Povich show. <laughs> Unfortunately, the test reveals that was a lie. <laughs> there, I mean, at this point, there just isn't any research to back any of this stuff up from the 15 minutes that I spent reading um, online about it. But let's just say that it does all those things. Let's go back to the big rock theory of health and fitness. Yeah. We got our glass. That's our life that we want to fill up with health and fitness with as least interruption to our normal life as possible and enjoy the process. We're going to focus on the big rocks that are going to fill that cup up as much as possible, getting enough sleep, eating a diet full of unprocessed whole foods. You know, what did I say? What was the first thing? Sleep, 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 whole foods, lots of consistent training, getting stronger, positive mindset, consuming helpful content, ignoring haters, all that kind of stuff. Those are the big rocks of getting in the best shape of your life and maximizing your time here on this earth, having faith in God, throw that in there too. And that's like 90% of your results, just focusing yeah. on the big rocks, worrying about how much colostrum to put in your protein <laughs> shake, how many uh, scoops of collagen protein you need to add in, how many extra multivitamins you need to put in, into your drink, like how many packs of element. These are all the small pieces of sand that if you got time, you got money, you got willingness, energy, all that stuff, you can pour some of that over the big rocks and fill up well, your Well, the glass. ironic thing is doing all the things that you said, fill in the big rocks are going to be the things that help you improve your immunity, improve yes. your gut health, help you fight infection. If you are... Right consuming a largely processed diet and fast foods and sleeping not five hours exercising and no priority. And then you add in the colostrum powder. <laughs> it's, it's a weight. That's a waste of money because that can't fight. A, I mean, I don't even know what it is, but I can't imagine it can fight against right. all the evil, other evil forces you're putting in right now. Yes. So doing that 90% with yeah. or without the powder is going to get you there. <laughs> and you could probably say, Oh, I'm doing all these things and I'm getting the benefits. Yeah. But I mean, you don't if need you, it. You if you just read it. off the the like supposed side effects, the positive side effects of taking the colostrum, you could just, you know, say I'm going to get all those things from eating a whole unprocessed food diet, from exercising regularly. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I was distracted because the low battery sign just oh, came yeah, up on your computer. Last last question. Um, Are you so done yeah, with that? just be ruthlessly <laughs> ruthlessly consistent with the big rocks. Listen to the Digital Barbell podcast if you don't know what those things are. Save your money on the colostrum and uh, yeah, proceed with life. All right. Ooh, I like this one. What do you recommend for extra glute work? I'd like to fo focus more on growth. Growth. They want some growth on those glutes. <laughs> We do have a free program out there called Abs, Arms, Ooh, yeah. and you know the rest. It's actually just digitalbarbell.com slash arms and abs, all spelled out. So you can go download well, that for and free. you know the rest. Yeah. It was too long yeah. to put in the description. But in the doing something page. like that, that's actually like five weeks, right? But that would give yeah. you a great idea of like 
not like we can list some exercises right here that are good for growth for your glutes, but that could give a great idea of like how to add it into your training, mm -hmm. you know, cause you're also going to get the abs and arms yep. work as well. <laughs> I'll say before we list off exercises that are good for growing your glutes, I'll say the most common mistake people make when trying to grow their, grow their glutes is just to throw a bunch of junk volume in with body weight stuff or only focusing on band workouts that like give you that huge mm -hmm. burn, like 10,000 donkey kicks and 40,000 glute mm -hmm. bridges with a band. Those can be great exercises and we do use those with clients, but those are not the primary right. things that are going to make any muscle They're grow. a great finisher for like right. after you've done the primary work. They're going to throw in a little bit yeah. of extra metabolic stress and some muscle damage to help with growth, mm -hmm. but we got to get the muscle stronger if we want to make the glutes bigger. I'm looking at this list you came up with and I'm like, the, the number one thing is going to be lunges and you don't you even love have that the lunges. on the list, but I do think that's the best way to like really grow your glutes and specifically step back lunges, not step forward, not walking lunges, not step forward. I do do those every once in a while for like a, a variation of a lunge, but primarily if you work with digital barbell, you've worked with me in the past, I'm going to have you doing a step back lunge because it it uses the posterior chain to get you out of that lunge position versus your knee to get you out of mm -hmm. the lunge position in the front. If you don't believe her, just go try <laughs> some step back lunges this week in your training and see where you're sore. But also and lunges to full ranges of motion, meaning your yeah. knee touches the ground. Right. We, we, we need the glute to fully stretch, yeah. which if you just look in a mirror and do a lunge, you can see as your, as your butt stretches, as you lift that knee. And, all if, you're, the way and up. if you're just starting into to this growth, I would start with unweighted lunges to make sure that you have the form down, you have the balance down. Another little tr trick I'm going to give you is to make sure that you're standing wide enough. I'm not going to like a coaching thing here. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I'm rerouting, but like a lot of people, when they do lunges, I don't know if you can see my hands, if you're watching, but like they stand with their feet really close together and they like are very tippy in a lunge stand with your feet like hip width apart and then you lunge back and step forward and lunge back and step forward you have this great base mm -hmm. and you don't feel unbalanced you don't want to do lunges on a tightrope and watch your foot your back foot like don't let that back foot get floppy yeah. you want to have like a really solid base back there right. so that's how you start off doing like learning how to do lunges and we even have like in our on our youtube channel an assisted lunge if you do find yourself not feeling the balance yet, you can hold on to like a band and go back into your lunges and learn how to do them. Yeah. From there, goblet weighted. From there, double dumbbell front rack rated. From there, barbell weighted. Now we're really starting to grow our glutes. From there, add a deficit, meaning like stack up some plates like an, a half an inch, one and a half inches to like four or so and lunge off that with your knee to the ground. That's where you're really going to get spicy. <laughs> um, things like that. That's, yeah. that's my lunge spiel. That's a good spiel, but you have to progressively get stronger at whatever yes. exercise you do to, to make sure that the muscle is growing. Focus the majority of your glute training on the compound lifts, mm -hmm. like lunges where there's your knees bending, your hip is bending both at the same time. Squats, like where your knee is bending and your hip is bending at the same time. Deadlifts, I'll just say again, like Sumo deadlifts. all these things that are multi-joint movements mm -hmm. that you can move large loads, making sure that you progress over time, both in adding weight and adding reps. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you're going to know if you're getting stronger is to keep track of how much you do and make sure you're doing more over time. Yeah. So in the program, like the arms and abs, you're going to see things. You're going to see the lunges. You're going to see squats. You're going to see deadlifts. You're going to see RDLs. You're going to see hip thrusts, you know, and then you're going to see things like we were talking about before with the bands, like where you walk back and forth or monster walk or squat to in like high reps. You feel that burn. As that finisher. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a feeling this per I don't know this person personally, but I have a feeling that they're, they've already been lifting weights and mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to grow their butt. Yeah. So let's just guess that they're like an intermediate trainer. They're going to have to be shooting for probably trainee, not trainer, mm -hmm. aiming for somewhere like between 15 and 20 hard sets on their glutes per week. That's probably the sweet spot for where they need to be to see the growth that they're hoping and that's, for. You would mix that up between the different varieties of right. exercises we just Right. Not 15 laid out. sets of each of those exercises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like downloading a program like that can give you an example of like how to spread it out yeah. within the other work that you're doing. Yeah. It's good. All right. If you made it this far in the podcast, <laughs> we're going to give you a free <laughs> bonus for making it this far. We've brought back the free week of training with Blakely or I. Oh, yes. So just go to digitalbarbell.com slash free week. We will set you up in True Coach. We'll um, 
we're going to give you a week's worth of workouts and we're going to coach you through it, give you the experience of what it's like to work with us. Yeah. So. You're going to, you're going to have a, 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 an account with in true coach. You're going to yep. get our workouts, see our demo videos. You're going to have a coach. To this is not like the light you version. This week. Yeah. You're going to get the full digital barbell experience and, and then you're going to love it. Let's do it. Digital barbell.com slash free week. And I'll put a link in the show notes for this too. Woo! All right. That's this episode. It was not Two super short <laughs> and we killed the battery on the computer. So hope you guys have a good day. We'll catch you next week.